Welcome to my video tutorial on the basics of Cascadawa. First, let's download and install the application free from their website. Link is down below in this video's description. Once installed, open the program. From here, you can open any of the pre-made templates by going File, then Open. Simply drag and drop the files to open them up. You will see each tab near the top left. You can save the scene through the file menu. The program can also automatically save open scenes at certain intervals. You can open auto saves through the file menu or through the start window. If necessary, you can assign a folder for auto saves, as well as set the time interval and the maximum number of auto saves for one scene. The program has several color themes, dark and light. You can choose the theme in the start window of the program. Open the start window, go to the settings tab and select a color theme. To control the viewport's camera, you need to hold Alt. Open any of the sample scenes, for example, standard model. While holding Alt, use the left mouse button to rotate the camera. Hold Alt and the right mouse button to zoom the camera. And finally, hold Alt and mouse wheel button to move the camera. You can select the coordinate axis by clicking on the cones around the view cube. Red is the X axis side view, green is the Y axis stop view, and blue is the Z axis front view. You can also switch between perspective and isometric views. Click in the center of the cube view to toggle perspective and isometric mode. In isometric mode, click on one of the cones around the cube. You will see a grid behind the model in the viewport. Sometimes it is necessary to fix the viewport camera in a certain position. Click on the lock icon next to the view cube to disable camera rotation. Pressing again allows you to rotate the camera. You can see an object from different sides simultaneously by using several viewports. You can also quickly switch between two different viewports. Press space to see multiple viewports. Change the viewport size by dragging their edges. Click in one of the viewports and press space to make it the main one. You can switch between modes using the buttons on the toolbar or the hotkey. Browse the modes near the top left. Use the S hotkey to quickly switch between view mode and the previous mode. Just to quickly make a note. Viewport means the main working space of the animator. You can use it to view scene objects and control them. To the right of the viewport, we have the outliner, which shows everything that is inside your scene. There are also three other tabs, but we shall go over them in another video. Now let's learn how to select and move objects in your scene. Manipulators are tools for managing objects in a scene. You can select the desired manipulator on the toolbar or using hotkeys. First switch to the point controller mode and make sure the selection tool is currently enabled. Click on point controllers to select them and they will turn yellow. 
double-click a point to select that point and all its childs. Hold the left mouse button and move the mouse so that a red frame appears. You can select several point controllers at once with a frame. Hold Shift to add new controllers to the selection or exclude the selected controllers from the group. Now let's select all the character's foot points. Then select the Translate Manipulator. Using the red, green and yellow arrows you can now move the foot. Select the circle in the center of the manipulator to move the foot on the screen plane. You can select and move different objects or groups of objects in a similar way. For example, to move a whole character, you have to select all of its points. The parts of the character's body in Cascadour can affect each other. If you pull the foot too hard, the other points of the skeleton will also move with it. To rotate a character's head, you'll want to start by selecting all three points of the head. Next, locate the rotation manipulator. This is represented by a small circle or arc. To rotate the head in the direction you desire, select the appropriate axis of the manipulator. For example, if you want to rotate the head up or down, choose the vertical axis. Alternatively, you can use the large circle of the manipulator to rotate the head in the plane of the screen. Keep in mind that you can also rotate other objects and groups of points in a similar way. For example, you can select all points of the right arm and rotate it. Now let's go over local and global modes. I'm going to use the default cube template to show this off first. Objects have global coordinates, which describe their place in the scene. The direction of these coordinates is the same, regardless of how the object is rotated. In global coordinate mode, it is convenient to move objects or body parts to specific locations in the scene. But objects also have their own local coordinates. Objects have local coordinates that rotate with the object and describe its position relative to its parent part. Switch between global and local coordinate modes with the tilde hop key. There are hinges in the character's elbows and knees. These hinges limit the rotation and allow the arms and legs to rotate on only one axis. To correctly rotate the arms and legs, you should use only their local bending axis to rotate a character's arm or leg in local coordinate mode. Select all points of the body part, starting from the elbow or knee. Switch the coordinate system to local mode. Rotate the body part along the required axis. To rotate a character's foot, start by selecting all points of the foot. Then, you have a few options for rotating the foot around different pivots. Right-click on the toe point to rotate the foot around it. Alternatively, you can right-click on the heel point to rotate the foot around the heel. If you want to return to the default pivot, simply right-click in an empty space. Using different pivots can make it easier to pose a character. For example, to rotate the shoulders, highlight the shoulder points and move the pivot to the clavicle point. This will allow you to rotate the body parts more easily and naturally. If you want to prevent inactive points from moving, you can fix them. Fixations can also be used to set some poses more quickly. To fix points and set a pose, start by selecting the points you want to fix. Then, press the R hop key. Red frames will appear around the points to indicate that they are fixed. Next, select the base point of the foot and pull it up on the y-axis. This will make the character stand on his toes. Press the R hop key again to undock the points. The tail mode is a useful tool for rotating all objects in a chain at once. Next, turn on the local mode and select local tail mode. 
you'll know it's active when you see the tail button a spiral icon appear near the manipulator. Now you can rotate the tail of the dinosaur by clicking and dragging the manipulator. In most cases, using local tail mode with the local coordinate system will work best. Well done! Subscribe to keep updated and in the next video we will go over the timeline and animating an object. Thanks for watching.